Welcome to r slash reddit revenge. This is a story of someone getting back at someone with revenge, after being wronged. And today we have three great stories, so subscribe, hit the like button, and let's begin. The first story, Martha Stewart convinced us to exchange our lilac bushes for a pile of garbage. The second story, I ruined the plans of the guy who threw my things away. The third story, head of the department tried to spread rumors about me and lost his job. On to the first story, don't like my shed? Try this. I'm calling this pro revenge because of the amount of work involved, but we've decided the work was worth it. For nearly 10 years, my family has lived next door to a gentleman who lived alone. Ours is an historic neighborhood, double city lots with lots of hedges, bushes, and trees to provide privacy. Also, I tend to be fairly easygoing about what others do in their own property. I really didn't care when our neighbor began illegally storing his large toys in his backyard. Due to the screening, I was the only neighbor who had to see his boats, ice house, TP, Yes, a full-sized authentic TP. I never asked why I put one up. And so I never complained. And when he turned his home into a duplex, without benefit of building permits or inspections, and in violation of current zoning, again, I never complained. I guessed he was now retired and needed the rent money. In any event, we've never had a problem with any of his tenants. Similarly, we never heard a peep out of him regarding our property. Not that we had any code violations or anything, but we did have a yard full of loud children and dogs for many years. And there was that one winter when we built a luge for the neighborhood kids that ran the entire fence line of our yards. Anywho, then our neighbor got a new girlfriend. I'm going to call my neighbor dragged around by my D, or D for short. His girlfriend will be here and after be referred to as Martha, as she was a Martha Stewart wannabe. Martha quickly moved into my neighbor's home and began altering it as she saw fit. The first thing we noticed was that Dick's neon sign collection was no longer visible through his windows. Ah, those bygone bachelor days. Then Dick's backyard toys were all sold. No more carefree days spent fishing for Dick. I'm guessing the proceeds went to the new patio furniture that soon appeared. Also, a second new patio was built onto the side of the house, because the backyard patio got too much sun for Martha's taste. And since Martha didn't want Dick's cat spraying the new patio furniture, she made Dick give the cat away to his son. That last one made me a little sad. The cat had been dumped in our neighborhood a few years back, and Dick had seemed happy to have his little friend. But again, not our business. Finally, new landscaping was installed throughout their backyard. That also made me sad because the historic plantings that helped make our neighborhood unique were ripped out and replaced with McMansion-style beds, filled with wood shavings and Japanese maples. If that was all Martha did, I'd have no real problem. If Dick was willing to put up with it, why should I care, right? But then she turned her attentions to our yard. First, she asked us to replace the historic wire fencing between our yards. Dick offered to split the cost, so we agreed. The old fencing had seen better days, and the new chain link fence was quickly hidden by ivy and lilac bushes. Good neighbors. Then Martha decided that we weren't cleaning up after our dog quick enough, and called out the compliance officer. In fact, we picked up after our dog daily, but at the end of each day, not after each dump. That's a personal ick factor of mine. I can't stand picking up warm poop. The compliance officer told Martha we hadn't violated any laws, while giving me a heads up on my new neighbor. Strike one. A few weeks later, I had a knock at the door. It was the landscaper who had done Dick's yard. Martha had called him out to my address, without my knowledge or consent, to provide us with an estimate. Estimate for what, you ask? Well, Martha had suggestions for new flower beds, as well as some trees she thought I should remove because they cast too much shadow on the back half of her yard. These were two-story tall, 80-plus-year-old oak trees. I apologized to the landscaper and sent him on his way, and my husband grumbled to Dick that our yard was our business, not Martha's. Strike two. Finally, Martha decided our gardening shed, tucked behind our garage, had to go. I'll admit it was a rather utilitarian shed, but it was in good shape, fresh paint, and was heavily screened on all three sides by tall bushes. In fact, I only learned about Martha's complaint because I found a city inspector wandering around my yard, looking for the shed. Because of the way it was situated, the only way someone not actually in my house could see it was if they were hanging out Dick's second-story bathroom window. I kicked the inspector off my property and called my councilman to put a stop to the city's partnership with Martha. It was then I found out why Martha wanted the shed gone. Turns out Martha really just wanted the screening bushes gone. She had plans for a third patio and fire pit for the back half of Dick's yard. Martha was worried, however, that the heavy bushes on the back half of our yard were encouraging mosquitoes and she and Dick wouldn't be able to properly enjoy their evenings by the fire. She figured that if she forced us to tear down our shed, we'd then also tear down the screening bushes and her mosquito problem would be solved. Strike three, Martha, so time for some pro revenge. Since we really didn't use the shed any longer, we tore it down. We also removed the screening bushes. Then we watched Martha spend a few days harassing a couple of handymen who built her patio and fire pit. 
It was snugged up right against our fence and looked really lovely. Then we decided that as good citizens of planet Earth, we needed to be more environmentally proactive. So we installed a composting pile right where the shed and screening bushes had been located. After all, it's the back of our yard and tucked behind the garage, so it really doesn't impact our enjoyment of our yard. And now, every evening, we take all our food scraps, potato peelings, coffee grounds, eggshells, watermelon rinds, etc., and add it to our large, healthy compost heap. Every month or so, we add some goat manure from our friend's farm. Turns out goat manure is a can't-miss addition for nitrogen-rich compost. Some shredded newspaper doesn't really look good, but it does help balance the carbon content. Late afternoons and early evenings, about whenever Martha lights a fire, really, one of us heads out to the composting and gives it a good turning. After all, a well-aired compost heap is a happy compost heap. Dick and Martha never said anything, even though compost heaps do add to mosquito population. The second story is, be a dick about the communal laundry, I'll keep you up all night. This happened about a year ago. For work I stay in camp a lot, as in where I stay while I'm away from home working. It's kind of like a hotel except the room is a lot smaller, with a small bed and a bathroom that I sometimes share with the room next to me, or my own bathroom and a large cafeteria for my meals. I don't pay for anything, the companies I work for pay for it. Normally people just go about their business, but sometimes when people get to camp they turn into inconsiderate barn animals. It was my first night in camp, I arrived home from vacation that morning and didn't have a lot of time to get everything ready to head to work about a five hour drive. Rather than do laundry at home, I just brought my clothes and decided I would just wash them in camp that night. I was working the night shift so that first night I was staying up all night to get turned around for the following night. I get into my room around 8, unpack everything and head down to the laundry room to wash my clothes. My room was right next to the laundry room, which was nice as I could hear the machine's buzzer when it was done. So I start my wash and head back to my room to play some Xbox. I was in the middle of playing when I heard the machine buzz, so I didn't get to it right away. I was between 5 to 10 minutes after my load was finished to getting there. When I went in, my wet clothes are on the floor, and some d-head has his in the wash. There's a table in the laundry room, or he could have simply put them into the dryer. Stack machines, it isn't that difficult. So I pick up my clothes and throw them in the dryer and head back to my room. I'm furious at this point and want to go rip the door open to the washing machine and pee all over his clothes. This is when I get a better idea. I decide I'm going to mess with this Neanderthal all night. Since it was evening and he was in camp, I assumed he was on day shift and had to be up early the next morning. So I finish my laundry and wait to hear him switch loads. Not only does he throw his clothes in the dryer, but he starts another load to wash. After I knew he was back in his room, I simply go back into the laundry room and pop the door on the dryer and close it again shutting it off, leaving his clothes just sitting there a heaping soaked pile. I go back to my room and wait. About an hour later I hear him come back and as soon as the door on the dryer opens, I hear a lot of cursing. Then the dryer door slams and starts again. I again wait a few minutes and go back and again open and close the dryer door to shut it off. Again I wait and this time when Mr. D-Head returns he completely loses it. I hear him ranting and raving for a couple of minutes before I hear the dryer start and him stomp off back to the hole he crawled out of. By now it's after midnight so I know this guy needs to get to sleep. I once again go turn off the dryer and laugh to myself. He must have went to sleep because he didn't come back until about 3am and I hear him lose his SH again. I just laughed to myself the entire time he was freaking out. He obviously didn't learn his lesson, because he hit the dryer again. He was a bit smarter, as he waited a couple minutes before he left, I guess to make sure the machine was running I guess? I waited a while before turning off the machine that last time. I didn't hear him come back because I fell asleep, but I went and checked when I woke up, around noon, and his clothes were dry in the dryer. And the last story is, delete the logs you say? Before P became our department head, we had his beta version, K. I work in an IT firm, and for some profound reason, the upper management decided to put a dunce for our newly created department. Before he came into the picture, I was the one who was running the SH show. I needed as much help as possible, so I ignored all the red flags that he's been showing. Mocking my educational background because I came from a public school, and he came from a school only the rich could afford. Telling me to not think about management things, as I haven't been promoted yet, and that it's out of my league. Constantly reminding me that he's my boss, and I should do what he tells me to do putting down the initiative of my colleagues because they should behave as rank-and-file employees and not something more. I helped Kay in getting to know how we run things in the company. Even though the department was newly created, I've been in the company for over a year already when he got hired. He consistently ignores what I'm teaching him and says that he's been doing it for over 10 years and finds it insulting that I'm the one walking him through all of it. Whatever, I'm doing my job. Over the next couple of months, he started showing his incompetence. He was dead weight. He dragged us down so much that I'd rather go back to the old setup, wherein I'm working 16 hours a day just to get SH done. He'd prolong every project we're working on by asking nonsensical questions. Because that's how we do it in my previous work, as per him. 
He'd always attempt to make you question your capabilities, and for those who were weak-willed, it actually worked. Now, being the arrogant a-hole that I could be, this didn't sit well with me. I was getting annoyed at him and started to straight up refuse his instructions because they were senseless and a complete waste of time. This is when he started getting personal. Since he's the department head, he controls our vacation leaves. He ensured that my team would have to go through a pinhole just to get our leaves approved. He would question my employees about why they need to date their girlfriend on a weekday, why they need to take care of their sick child since their wife and husband's at home, and why I can't bring my laptop with me so I can work while on vacation. The labor laws in my country doesn't have teeth. It didn't end with that. He attempted to create a following who despises me because I don't work hard. Dumb F doesn't know how to automate and insists that I should do it manually. He tried to assassinate my character by spreading rumors about how I wanted his work and that I'm simply showing off. That's when I decided to play his own game. It all started when I got tasked to check why our attendance capturing system was not working properly. After fixing it, I extracted his attendance records because I've noticed that he wasn't spending the full nine hours at work. Lo and behold, he's consistently been two to three hours late daily from the day he started here. Not only that, there are days that he was on vacation, but his leave credits haven't been deducted. After making sure that this date is accurate, I used it as my bait. I confronted him about it and asked him what we need to do. I feigned ignorance and gave a hint that it could be a system error. He took the bait. He instructed me to delete the logs and don't mind creating a report about it. Little did he know that my phone was recording our conversation. I submitted the evidence of fraud to HR. We had an administrative hearing which went smoothly. He's fired. End of story. <laughs> Not. The revenge came a bit after. Remember how he tried to spread rumors about me? Payback time, B. I sent a copy of the evidence, a brief summary of the event, and his termination papers to each of our competitors' HR department. This happened two years ago. I still see him from time to time visiting his minions, in the company, asking for a possible job opening which they might know of. I'm assuming he's been jobless for two years and counting. He wouldn't have lost his job if he wasn't such a jerk, since I'm too lazy to go through the hassle of getting him fired. P.S. I'm still sending the evidence and documentation to various HR departments across the country when I have nothing better to do. If you want more stories, don't forget to subscribe and turn on notifications. Have a good one!